My name's Julie Benson. I'm a Trade and Standards Officer with lead responsibility for feed hygiene. The purpose of this film is to support local authority feed officers um, to address the competency requirements in relation to primary production inspections that are laid down in the Feed Law Code of Practice. We're going to cover a number of areas throughout the film. The first area we'll look at is the purpose of feed hygiene applying to feed business operators. We'll also consider the general principles of food law. We'll look at registration and approval of feed business operators and consider how practically we will undertake inspection of the farm to ensure it's complying with the relevant operational standards. We'll also look at marketing and use of feed, the labelling requirements. So what are the expected outcomes as a consequence of viewing this film? I'll expect you to be able to identify feed hazards, apply the principles of the feed hygiene regulations and the general principles of food law, be able to understand feed labels, apply the operational standards that are applicable to a primary producer, to be able to analyse records and assess whether records are adequate, to identify any non-compliances and be able to take appropriate and proportionate enforcement action but most importantly, to feel confident and competent to inspect a primary producer. Primary producers are subject to the operational standards laid down in Annex 1 of the Feed Hygiene Regulations. When an inspector's on farm, they're assessing that the primary producer is ensuring that the operations are managed, carried out to prevent and eliminate and minimise hazards with the potential to compromise feed safety. They're also considering um, how the primary products are produced, prepared, stored, transported to ensure they're protected from contamination, damage and spoilage. Where a primary producer is feeding food producing animals, in addition to having to comply with the Annex 1 requirements of the Feed Hygiene Regulations, they're subject to Annex 3 requirements in respect of good animal feeding practices. When an inspector is assessing compliance against Annex 3, they're going to be looking at the feed, how it's stored, the quality of the water, the distribution system on farm, pasture grazing, the stable and feeding equipment, in order to assess whether there are any inherent risks. So we're here in the main feed store area uh, where most of the complementary um, and bagged feed materials are being stored. So, so what are we looking for? Um, we need to look at the products to make sure they're appropriately labelled and that they are actually from an approved or registered source. We need to look at the cleanliness of the store, that there's no unopened bags, no evidence of pests, um, no household waste, no food waste that's been dumped um, alongside the feed. If the feeds for different species of animals, is it segregated, is medicated and non-medicated feed been stored separately? So let's have a look at some of the labels. We've got a mineral feed here, um, which details its analytical constituents correctly. The composition of the feed is, is properly labelled. And we can see uh, the batch number, but more importantly, um, we can identify that it's um, a UFAS compound feed approved premises. And we've got the details here of the approval number correctly recorded on the label. This is an interesting product. It's a complementary feed that contains urea. A common mistake for officers is to think that the farmer is actually incorporating urea, which is an additive and would require the farmer to comply with Annex 2 requirements. This product is a complementary feed containing urea. I've got an example um, of a label that's been taken off um, an additive um, bag of urea and you can see it's quite clear that this is a bag of nutritional feed additive of which it's urea and it's got its identification number on there. If this farm had been mixing with that product, they'd be subject to the Annex 2 requirements. It's important that officers don't make that mistake. Um, they are a primary producer because the urea is contained within the complementary feed. Something else to look out for on farm is any misleading pictorial matter. Um, this label here clearly shows the picture of a sheep 
and a cow, two different species. On the back of the label, it clearly says, due to the high levels of copper, that this product shouldn't be fed to sheep. It would be very easy if the farmer was poorly for someone else to come in um, and use that incorrectly um, and feed it to sheep. Looking around the storage area, um, the products are segregated. I'd probably advise the farmer in respect of some of the open bags that are here to make sure that they're fully covered. I can't see any evidence of pests. Um, there isn't any bait box uh, visible, but there's no um, obvious pests, no drop-ins. Um, everything is dry. The roof looks relatively um, good. So structurally, um, I'd be quite happy with this storage area. The only concern that I would have is this could be a haven to pests. You've got packaging here. Um, I think it just needs a general tidy up. Clearly, the farmer's gone to some lengths to keep the packaging together in this bag, um, but he maybe wants to make sure um, that any debris is collected up um, and disposed of quickly. I'm wondering if there is a little bit of water ingress in here. Stamp on the floor, but none of these are wet, are they? No. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you can tell how comfortable... I'm about to carry out an inspection at a large dairy farm. According to the local authority's feed register, they're registered for mixing feeds with additives and premixtures. They're also registered for the activity of mixing feeds with complementary feeds containing additives and premixtures. This means that the farm could be subject to the higher operational activities under Annex 2 of the feed hygiene regulations. The first thing I need to establish is whether they are actually incorporating additives and premixtures into the feed that's been fed to the animals. If they are, then they are subject to Annex 2. If they're actually using complementary feeds which contain additives and premixtures, then they will be classified as a primary producer and subject to the Annex 1 and Annex 3 requirements. So you can get an accurate picture of the actual activity being undertaken on the farm. You need to always ask open questions of the farmer. The when, the why, the where, what, how and who questions. That's going to enable you to elicit important information uh, to determine what activity has been undertaken. So what should you do if you found a product labelled in this way? I would check the label, ascertain the source of the feed um, and look at the approval or registration number and contact the um, local authority feed officer responsible for that feed mill um, and have a discussion about how we could rectify um, the misleading picture on the front.